Hello and welcome to Bottom Line, your Enlightenment campaign talk show. Tonight we discuss the European Union election for mission report. It contains a number of findings that appear to reprimand government on one hand and then heap a giant praise on the same government for achievements made and implementing some of the 29 recommendations made by the EU election observation mission in 2018. Why is the report states that the EU mission was told that there is a significant decrease in trust in essential bodies which play integral roles in the forthcoming elections, naming the judiciary, the police, the PPRC and MEC. It also acknowledges on the other hand the achievement in decriminalizing libel as a vital step in ensuring and strengthening freedom of expression in Sierra Leone. Why does the EU report single out the libel law? Well, you can join the conversation by following us live on Facebook at SBC TV channel 31 or through SMS to 030 The number again, 030 My name is Joseph Ebinda Kapua. Bottom line coming to you from our New England studios. My guests tonight are Mohamed Rahman Swari, Minister of Information and Communications, and the Honorable Ibrahim Bundu, former Majority Leader and Head of Government Business in Parliament for the All People's Congress APC. He was head of, well, former head of delegation to the Africa Caribbean Pacific or ACP EU Joint Parliamentary Assembly for a decade where he was vice president and later president. We will sample his experience to bear on this discussion. Welcome to Bottom Line, gentlemen. Thank you. For Thank you very much. Good to be here. Um, let's get started, and I will begin um, with the Honorable Ibrahim um, Bundu. You are a uh, former head of delegation to the ACP EU uh, Joint Parliamentary Assembly, uh, where you are uh, Vice President and later uh, President, respectively. I mean, between 2008, we understand, yeah. and, and 2018. Give us an insight uh, into the work of the EU Observation, if you like. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I think routinely uh, the EU had an obligation. Uh, which stems way back from uh, way back from 1979 on the Cotonou Agreement uh, to interface in terms of uh, development, in terms of politics, with Sierra Leone through the ACP Cotonou Agreement, the African, Caribbean, and Pacific. So that relationship had been, had been going on up to as we speak. So if the EU delegation uh, is sending a mission here for this purpose, it's a, it's a routine thing. It's not something out of, you know, they are not, uh, they are not uh, a civil society outfit. There is uh, an agreement, the Cotonou Agreement. I was fortunate to be a member of that parliament where I served for several years as you have stated. So the EU coming, you know, to Sierra Leone has a lot of meaning. One, on the Cotonou Agreement, and two, it is an obligation for them to, to actually come uh, as and when necessary to to, to to interface with the, the countries that are dealing with, especially the ACP countries. How is it um, constituted in the mission? Well, the mission, um, of course, I, uh, one of the the the, the, uh, the head of mission was what a member of parliament that I sat with, and uh, of course, as a man of uh, strong 
note is one of the strong European members of Parliament. Uh, he has been here before Nwasa. Uh, we entered as Parliament together. I think he entered in 2009, I entered in 2008, and we have had a very good relationship as somebody I know. The constitution of that is uh, with the, because I believe he, he was the head, uh, yes, he's the head, and uh, he's coming from parliament. They have other outfits that uh, constitute, you know, constitute that uh, delegation. You know, they have their own mechanic, you know, mechanics on how to, who and who they would want on certain missions. Because uh, during my, during my term in, in that parliament, I mean, I have gone to several observer missions, okay. you know. So they are norm it's normally uh, under the, the administrative, you know, uh, wing of the, of that assembly. Uh, does the mission or, or the share any, any political philosophy? Well, it does, because the EU relationship with the ACP, where Sierra Leone comes in, you know, is, uh, is a relationship that's, that cuts across economic uh, development, political, uh, you know. That's why we even have uh, an assembly, a parliamentary assembly. Ah. And when we talk about a parliamentary assembly, that should speak to the fact that they, they they cover everything that is political. Um, the uh, Honourable Minister, um, Sierra Leone hosted a number of um, election observer missions, mm -hmm. I mean, spanning um, um, 2002, I mean, like the EU, the Qatar Center, ECOWAS, AU, and, and a host of other <coughs> you know, um, local organizations, like I said, between 2002 yeah. and uh, 2007, 2012, and even now, uh, 2018 then, your government um, was in opposition then. How does this government understand um, elections observer missions? Uh, thank you very much. You know, this has uh, uh, been a long journey. As far as my memory could serve me, um, we first have a day here um, in 2002. So elections observer mission recommendations are not a new phenomenon in Sierra Leone. Following the 2002 elections, um, there were um, recommendations. Same as for the 2007 elections um, outcome, same as after the 2012 um, elections. But I want to note that in most of these instances, you know, previous governments have done little to implement those recommendations. I particularly want to zero in on 2013, following the 2012 elections. Several recommendations were made to the previous administration for necessary actions. None of them was implemented, and they included um, repeal of a criminal libel, empowerment of women, you know, giving them more space, giving them more voice, right? All of those things were brought forth as part of the recommendations. You know, governments have come and gone, and no one has been bold and audacious enough to take action. So we are saying, as a government, that we are addressing a, a deluge of historical shortcomings, a deluge of historical inactions, Right from 2002 to 2018, we were not in government, but governments are about taking responsibility. We have taken the onus to address the key and critical challenges enlisted in the 29 recommendations of the EU. But before that, even over and above that, we have in totality 111 recommendations. Um, the other form are observer missions, the EU, the Commonwealth, ECOWAS, and the Qatar Center had 82 recommendations, yeah, spanning over a long period of elections observer um, sessions. So 82 recommendations plus 29 recommendations, I think should be equal to 111, right? But 111, following the convening of a stakeholders meeting, the stakeholders agreed they will, uh, they will, they will, they will address 103, 103. Seven of them do reject um, the awards advanced around the world, which had to do with the movement 
uh, vehicular movement or otherwise on pulling the there was no agreement on that. So this is the kind of thing we are talking about. Now, um, um, a number of recommendations you have made, you know, as an outcome of the general observation uh, uh, mission, like you said, in 2012. I go through them quickly. Revision of the provisions of the Public Order Act, mm -hmm. uh, strengthening the powers and legal authority of the Independent Media Commission, mm -hmm. participation of women in public life, the candidacy of naturalized citizens, mm -hmm and those with dual nationality for parliament. All these we are unmet for the whole of the second term of the previous government. Um, um, Honorable Bundu, what makes it difficult for government, usually, as in the instance of the previous, to usually um, um, work in line with uh, the implementation of some of these um, um, recommendations? I mean, like we said, in 2012, I mean, these we are recommendations that follow the elections in 2012 and you know uh, the legal authority of the IMC spreading the powers of the IMC the public order acts and all of this but then government sometimes can be slow in doing all of this how does the recommendations of EU observer missions factor into the context you know governance context of uh, um, you know governments or countries largely uh, to be honest with you, I don't want to go along that part of okay. uh, the difficulty of government to implement some of those recommendations because uh, maybe I would not be too, you know, I know recommendations, applications or recommendations are made, you know, so what that part of why the, the previous government or they were not. I don't want to go along that path because I was following the discussion after this uh, observer mission came out to the public and uh, a lot of exchanges here and there in, in social media and even the, the, the traditional media, you know, has taken, I listened to 98, I listened to other radios. It's now topical. So one of the interests I would want to, to, to express here is, one, uh, what is the EU? Why are they here? And what is their contribution to the national uh, well-being of Sierra Leone? You know, the ECP general and Sierra Leone in particular, I want to speak to Sierra Leone based on, the, on, this, on these reports. The, AC, the EU is a very strong partner in terms of our, uh, our economic development, our political well-being. Uh, a lot of, uh, there is a lot of uh, reason why this relationship started way back in the 70s and is still strong. The EU, as we know, it's one of our biggest partners in terms of development in this country. We are now in the 11th EDF, that is the European Development, development Fund. That is the window through which all their activities in terms of funding, you know, it goes to, to this country. And Sierra Leone is a very from a big benefactor. They were a great beneficiary of that window. For years, we are now in the 11th EDF. I think for the 11th EDF, under the National Indicative Program, the NIPs, you're talking about 379 million euros allocated to, 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 to Sierra Leone. And uh, I think it's divided into five sectors. Let me, let me see. I think we have five sectors here. You know, the the, fifth, the the focal sector number one covers governance and civil society. The, the second one covers education, agriculture, and uh, the Liberia Road. Liberia Road. Then uh, there is support for for, for measures. When we look at all of this, the totaling 
376, 376 million euros. So they have every reason to 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 be here, and uh, they have uh, they have what I uh, what we the parliamentarians we call an obligatory oversight role because this is their taxpayers' money. And mind you, the European Union comprises of 27 countries from the from, uh, from Europe. 27 countries. It's made up of 27 countries. So that's baskets where they put all their funds. They have an obligation. And they have an obligation to go back to 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 uh, explain to the people how these monies that were approved by their by the European Parliament, the the uh, other outfits, how they go back to, to to explain to their people through the through the development commissioner, you know. Was, uh, as a former member of that uh, assembly, okay. that's the routine. Oh, so yes. that is the kind of uh, thing I see. So it's not one of those uh, reports that is in the ordinary. This is a very, a very important report. That oh, right. When we come to issues. the the report, I mean, following the 2012 elections. But let me uh, cross over to. The minister, and from the government, you know, sample your your um, reaction or response uh, to the report. How do you receive it? Yes. Yeah, so first, um, like Honorable Abraham Bundu noted, Sierra Leone and the EU have come a long way. Um, this has been a mutually reinforcing, a mutually beneficial relationship. We value it, we treasure it, we cherish it, and want to grow it from strength to strength. Like I mentioned, the EU is a key partner in delivering education, supporting the free quality education. Recently, you know, we are together at the launch of uh, about 100 school buildings to support the free quality education. We know they support governance, um, resilience, they support civil society, and strengthening governance institutions. We appreciate all of this and we want that relationship to continue. How did government receive the, the recommendations? Um, it's a mixed bag. There is a dose of disappointment as much as there is cause for celebration. They have noted the bold steps we have taken to repeal a five of the criminal libel law of 1965. They have noted the abolition of the death penalty. They have noted our gender empowerment drive. They've noted you know, um, the new model for appointing commissioners to the Independent Media Commission. All that is fine and beautiful. They are breaker for all to see. We are, however, concerned about uh, wide generalizations in their reports. For example, they noted that they were told, they were informed that there is winning trust in elections management bodies. I mean, while that might be very legitimate, we want the European Union to further help government to be able to uh, address this issue. How do we want them to help us? We are partners. We've come a long way. We have had a long and good relationship. We will be very interested in knowing the baseline, the took, the took of them. We will be interested in getting the relevant data uh, you know, that informs their categorical statement that they, are, they have been informed that there is a drop in confidence in these EMBs, electoral management bodies. We will also be interested in knowing who these people are, who they spoke to. Because a problem, you know, acknowledge is a problem half solved. Right? So we want data on this. So we will be very pleased if the EU could throw more light on this, if they could uh, give us more insight. It's possible they have, you know, they know something that the rest of mankind does not know. So that will be a logical first step in addressing the winning trust like they have alleged. You know, His Excellency too has said, uh, we as a government are quite open to continue to discuss and dialogue with the European Union, but this will be a very valuable contribution they will bring to the discourse. Do you have an opinion on that? Yes, yes. Uh, it's very interesting. 47% of the 376 euros they allocated under the 11th EDF uh, 
is given part of it is given to uh, is, is allocated to governance and the civil society. You know the role of the civil society, and of course, if you are given money, you must you must, you must write a report. You must submit a report at the end of to to report the activities. You know on how that money is spent. So I think that one is uh, could be. I mean, uh, 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 a source through which those informations can be, you know, like he's asking the source of the information to categorically talk about the winning trust, you know. Then, of course, also outside of the EU as a group, the countries, the individual countries that made up the EU, are also are also uh, partners, embassies in this country like France, the Belgium, uh, Austria, you know, most of the, uh, out of these 27, a host of them have been having relationship, good but relationship. The question is, how does it work on a, I'm not talking about, we're talking about a report, okay? This is a report containing findings, as a matter of fact, some research conducted, mm -hmm. as a matter of fact, which, like the minister um, is suggesting, should have um, contained, for example, the methodology, okay, probably the population, and probably how the sampling was. I mean, you can't just wake up, for instance, and say, ah, 20% um, of, of SNBC or whatever, you know, staff, mm -hmm. they don't have confidence in the administration, etc. There has to be a population. How many staff do you have, for instance, in this, in this institution? Of that number, you know, what is the sample size? Then you can be not necessarily saying, okay, we spoke to this civil society, we spoke to that civil society. What is the population of that sample? And remember, as a research, and from your experience, can you come out with what one would, you know, uh, consider a hearsay when we are told the mission was told? When, where, who, and all of this? I'm sure uh, after you've heard about the long-standing relationship, I mean, it's so conventional that they are not doing something new. What they, are, they have done today, I mean, can we go back to those uh, to those reports? You know, see, like the, those are the minutes of the. No, they are not challenged. Well, well, in fact, they were not challenged. Well, not, well, not, well, not challenging them does not mean they were not credible. You see, that's why I, I'm, I'm taking my time to see. But not challenging them does not mean it was credible. Well, well, either way. I, I mean, yes, either way. I mean, you can you can challenge them or you cannot challenge them. The reason for past government or past administration not challenging them can best be explained. But, however, for the for the purpose of us talking here as unions. It is only but uh, good that we go back to those and see how we can respond to some of this because the, so many reports have been made by the EU mm -hmm. over the period. You know, I, kn I know this is 2018, uh, the, the report of 20, 2012, 2013, you know, the, rep the reports before that. If we go back to that is why annotation here should not be be viewed like com uh, confrontation. We have so many outfits to, con to consult. Like in our own case, when you talk about the EU, the Secretariat of the EU, or the, the direct ministry that is responsible for the EU programs in this country, uh, it's the Ministry of Finance and Economic Development, that is one outfit where you can have all of it. And besides that, the uh, National Authorizing Office it's kind of the, it's the kind of like the secretariat that is responsible for coordinating all EU EU uh, affairs, and even Parliament, with the delegation of the uh, parliamentarians to the EU Parliament, your ambassadors, you, they attend meetings of what you call the Committee of Ambassadors and Council of Ministers. That's where the Minister of Finance and the Minister of Economic Development, that's where they come in. So when you, when you sit with all of those, you will definitely see as a government how this, uh, how this EU relationship 
vis-à-vis -vis development and what you know how they, they, they tailor their 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 their, uh, their reports what inform them of that report you know so that's the kind of thing I I'm sure uh, that that uh, that previous governments we are doing you know but to leave it in the hands of you know we have to be very careful we, we tread very cautiously this outfit I have explained here will definitely give us. Uh, a, a, a very serious information that will not bring in people who might be ill-informed, you know, like when I was listening to some of the, 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 the people that were indicted, like the judiciary, like the PPRC NEC, PPRC NEC, yes. Because the question is, first and foremost, the, are you benefiting from the EU uh, uh, European Development Fund, yes, PPRC, yes, Judiciary, yes, uh, uh, the others. So if you are benefiting from them, then definitely they have an oversight Is it your position that because you are benefiting from them, you have to be shy, if you like, you know, in so well, far... No, 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 I'm not uh, uh, allowing you to complete. Definitely that does not suggest because, I mean, Getting something from you does not mean uh, I should not come out with my own uh, my own queries because it, this is a report. We are talking about a report suggesting a significant decrease, a significant decrease, and there is nowhere there is nowhere you can sample how that is the case. And all you can suggest at the moment is to see, to tread cautiously, and probably now go to these outfits and you know get this information. Is is that is that a position? I will. Uh, yes, I will. I will. I will. I will engage before sitting with the EU. I will engage those because I'm saying. I'm not going to Let's challenge. Let's let's look at the report. No, I'm not here to challenge the report. No, it's not challenging the report. Mm -hmm. Let's look at the report itself. Mm -hmm. When looking at the report itself, what it states, what it provides, you have been with this for a decade or so. What what rings a bell? What message does it send? If a report that is supposed to be scientific, if a report that is supposed to be proven comes out saying. We were told that X, Y, Z was already foundation. <laughs> the report is routine. It I doesn't make it right. I don't. I don't. Uh, I, don't uh, I, I, I stated it as an issue. This is not the first report. I mean, it's only that uh, maybe the method that we uh, previous government have used to 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 challenge or to talk about this report, to deal with these reports, you know. That's why I'm bringing all of those key players. Anyway, then we will come to that bit again. Um, let me see how the, the, the government spokesperson will also, I mean, the, the, the caution is there that in so far as the relationship is an issue, people have to take cautiously in responding to all of this. And that is probably the, 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 the piece of advice, if you like, that the Honourable is suggesting to the government that we try it and probably approach these other layers, these other bodies, in so far as you know how the report itself uh, came about. Do you agree? No, nobody's adversarial here, right? Yeah. Even the very best of friends can have dissenting views on an issue. Mm -hmm. uh, they have pointed out 29 recommendations prior to this period. Many of the previous governments have done nothing about those recommendations, right? In, 20, in the 2013 um, cycle, the recommendations that were issued, the previous government did nothing about it, absolutely. He can bear witness to that. This is fact, right? This government is three, three and a half years old. We have already done um, quite some receipt heavy, heavy lifting, the repeal, and all of the things I just enlisted. And we are committed to doing more to address the concerns. Because President Bill is never shy. He has a huge appetite to, you know, broaden freedoms, deepen citizens' engagement, strengthen our democratic institutions, just to ensure that more and more people are giving voices and freedoms to speak freely and make decisions that on other government. So we take that point. Uh, already, 
Some of the key and critical recommendations have been addressed. For example, we have set up uh, a national elections, right? Sustainable Basket Fund uh, with an initial deposit of $5 million. So this is something that is part of the recommendations they did, right? We have already addressed that, right? A host of other recommendations are addressed or will be addressed in the um, uh, Public Elections Act re as reviewed and the Political Parties um, Registration Commission Act as reviewed. Both of these documents are currently with the Attorney General for enactment for, for you know, draft instructions, for drafting of appropriate legislations to effect those changes for parliamentary enactment. With those two uh, documents enacted, about 80% of the recommendations would have been addressed. So we are following the course, and this government remains implacably committed. So let's look at the methodology adopted in our critical um, the, the methodology adopted. Some of the recommendations have yes. been rejected. The, the methodology, yes, we'll some come, have been rejected. We'll, we'll, we'll come to that. And just looking at the uh, methodology, because this is the research, this is the study, and there are findings and all together, and maybe a good more people are maybe concerned with the methodology adopted. I mean, let me read this excerpt from the, the Dr. Mission. We are here to engage with a wide range of stakeholders from government, civil society, political parties, and electoral management bodies in order to gather their views on the ongoing electoral process. Now, Mr. Minister, mm -hmm. you speak um, about yes. government. We are you consulted as the government and probably your input um, um, reflected in the report? Well, government, they, they, they met with key government officials. Um, views for the most part have not been reflected here why do i say so um, the eu has been with us on this journey and that's been a very very valuable contribution in june this year they sponsored a stakeholder consultation where key electoral reforms were mapped out including uh, a stipulated date for the conduct of both presidential and parliamentary elections including granting uh, the, the necessary constitutional provisions to ensure that independent candidates are able to run for the presidency, including uh, a whole host of other issues, right? They funded that, right? And at that meeting, I think in October again, there was another meeting that they funded, the EU funded. At that meeting, progress was reviewed. Only um, the elections management bodies the National Elections Commission, the PPRC, and allied government institutions, the Judiciary, Office of National Security, and your, your, your outfit, the Ministry of Information, all the reports of progress they have made on the thematic issues associated with their outfits, right? In that meeting, uh, progress was acknowledged, and all parties were urged to expedite at least before the next elections. So they knew that substantial work was being done, a lot of heavy lifting was being done. They could just have alluded to that and say, look, we urge government to complete this assignment rather than coming back to give the kind of damper. Now, uh, um, um, a particular quote from the report is now trending on social media. I mean, you just uh, made reference to that. Uh, let me read for that the nation has been told that there is a significant decrease. Has the nation has been told that there is a significant decrease in trust in the essential bodies which play integral roles in the forthcoming elections. They include the judiciary, NEC, PPRC, and the police. The question is, who told the mission that? I mean, is it the case again that, like you said, um, we have to go to, I mean, these other institutions, these players? I mean, there is no attribution to a percentage of interviewees, as a matter of fact, even if not being those interviewees, who to the EU a percentage of respondents who actually uh, said so. You see, this is a research. Yes, the minister has just told you about uh, the, some of the consultations there with the key stakeholders, the ministries, the department agencies, and of course we all knew he went to, in, to he engaged the former president. Dr. Anes by Kurman, we saw that uh, visit. Uh, he engaged, they also engage uh, several civil society. And of course, embassies of the EU, 
EU, pali, uh, EU uh, uh, family are here. All those could be sources. So you see, if we are told, I mean, I know uh, uh, at the end of the day they will have to definitely engage the EU. But I'm just, I'm just playing the devil's advocate as a former member. You know, we all have very diverse ways of re reacting to a situation. We have been in this situation for the past 11 years when uh, we are in government and uh, these reports we are coming, you know, as uh, maybe biannually or annually. Then when they come, they, it is your, the way you manage them that will bring a brouhaha or, uh, you know, that will just uh, resolve the issues and uh, you forge ahead. That's why uh, I told you I don't want to involve in the we have done this, the others did not do this. That's really not uh, you know, the way I want to look at things. The way I want to look at it, when I look at the relationship between the EU and Sierra Leone, and having sat in that parliament in a higher capacity, uh, I was a bit worried about the discussions that were going on on social media and also in the traditional media. But that is the, one of the encouraging factors drive me to say let me come and contribute because this is one of the the, the, the the relationship that you don't want you know to to actually go sour so the the, the more we become very consultative and very cautious on how we are and according to the report is it wrong um, no government can respond they are no it is not wrong they have been coming out with reports and past governments have been have also been responding but uh, in the other way, we have not been here. For the purpose of this discussion, I'm yes. not sure it's confrontational in the sense. You know, you may have had on social media. I mean, we well, can well, you see, a matter of you fact. see, you see. But uh, when, 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 when has been vice president and probably head of delegation for quite some time, you know, when you speaking on the local government, you expect constructive, you know, uh, engagement in view of this um, uh, report. I mean, forget the social media. You can't control that. I know. I keep saying this. You know, uh, I know that the, the, this is a high-profile uh, engagement. And uh, we have also high-profile people in the both in government and other outfit to contact so that uh, we will not leave it, will not be overtaken by events or by some, some, some pronouncement of some social media people, you know, even in our radios when you hear, uh, when you listen to, to to the representative from the judiciary, I was a bit worried about some of the statements, you know, that uh, that, that, that came out. And even, you know, uh, for, for, the, for the EU, you know, to, if you want to confront the EU, I'm not here to actually say, don't don't, don't air out your frustration, you know, whether uh, you control it, to say the least, because that's a very uh, uh, high-profile relationship that benefits uh, you so much. All right, um, the Honorable Minister, let me quote another portion of the report. Um, Michael, the 2019 High Court decisions to declare the runner-up elected in 10 constituencies eroded confidence in the judiciary. I mean, by this statement, the EU is challenging our High Court decision and probably suggesting in the last paragraph how the letter of our constitution should be applied. Is that um, um, not a little, if you like, um, um, condescending? I, I, I honestly going to um, avoid going into the merits or otherwise of that. Um, that is an issue they could have flagged with the judiciary. They could have given them more insight, additional details, and whatever. From where I sit and what I know, I mean, yes, we will st we we are still uh, dealing with a historical crisis. The judiciary, like all other state government institutions, have had their own fair share of challenges. But I am aware that for the very first time in the history of this country, every part of this country now have resident judges, right? Which makes justice expeditious which makes access to justice, you know, um, a lot more possible than in all the time since we gained independence. That is in itself commendable, right? Um, the lawyers like to say justice delayed is justice denied. So these people now have access to justice. Talk to people in Falabar District, 
talk to people in Kailao and other far from communities. This is happening. I'm also aware that this government has recruited more state councils than any other in the recent history of our country. You know, because before now, cases are on duly adjourned because the state council is not in court and, you know, for a host of other reasons. All of these things have been addressed. Yes. Have we, have we uh, addressed all of the challenges in the judiciary? No, there are still challenges. But, you know, I'm sure the EU team will have benefited a lot more if they sat with the Chief Justice and his team to understand the anatomy of the justice delivery system. Right, rather. But again, that's a conversation for another day. Um, so I am very heartened by the fact that both the EU and the government of Sierra Leone are still in discussions, and both parties have demonstrated their willingness and commitment to deepen this conversation just so that at the end of the day, the eventual beneficiaries will be the government and people of Sierra Leone. And the EU too is seen to be giving their taxpayers. Uh, value for money that is spent here. Yes, and yes. Have an opinion on that. yes. yes. The opinion I want to, because the the question is very specific on uh, what the what the uh, the honourable from the EU Parliament said about the ten MPs. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, me and you, all of us sit here. Mm -hmm. This is not something new. Okay. We, we we I know about uh, some of most of the things that happen. You know how the what happened? I don't know. Oh, you don't know. Okay. Uh, 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 I'm happy that you don't know, and I'll tell you what I know. Of course, no, I'm I like that thought you know. Yes, you uh, might not know everything. Yes, no, no, I've never claimed that. I know we had an election. After the election, uh, procedurally, there are going there are going to be petitions, and after the petitions, within a, the time frame stated in the public uh, public election act and the constitution. Those matters ought to have been looked into, you know. And after that, I also know from what is contained in those two legislations uh, that if a judgment about a petition of uh, another member of parliament is, uh, is in court and a judgment is given, it has not granted the loser you know, uh, uh, the, uh, yeah, yeah, the winner that not granted the winner from his party to be replaced by immediately after that, uh, after after the judgment, procedurally, constitutionally, I know you have to go back to you have to go back to to NEC to declare the, the vacancy, and the uh, person during the period he, uh, he he has been he was serving during the period of the of the. Uh, of the petition, he will be asked by the speaker to leave the parliament, so that seat will be declared vacant. And uh, procedurally, that is that we, that that is what will give uh, will give way to another election. We call it the by-election to fill that vacancy. All right, on but I what mean, we saw on your on your experience, I mean, and what you know insofar as that process mm -hmm. is concerned and probably what is contained again in the mm -hmm. in the report because suggesting mm -hmm. that elections were annulled and that probably another election ought to have been mm -hmm. conducted. Now if you read the 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 judgment mm -hmm. itself, I mean forget about it, just reading the judgment itself, you knew that one that the elections particularly for the MPs were never annulled by the MPs. They were never annulled, contrary to um, what is being is being reported that they were annulled. No, I mean it was to the effect that the ten MPs ought not to have even contested in the first place. For constituency one one zero in that same judgment, mm -hmm. you realize that a rerun was, I mean ordered, a rerun was ordered. That's why, for instance, you as candidate. The Honorable Minister as candidates are actually qualified to contest the elections, but either due to violence or maybe someone running away with the ballot boxes or some intervention actually affecting the elections, notwithstanding your competence or otherwise your qualification to, to uh, compete, then they can, if that is proven in court, they can order. But when it is proven 
that you ought not to have even contested as a candidate in the first place, which was what the judgment, I mean, respectfully in my view, I mean, uh, made clear that those candidates ought not to have even contested. They were not qualified for whatever grounds. They were not qualified to contest. That was not a rerun. That was all that. So the elections were never an opportunity to indicate. Where are they? Uh, they told us that uh, uh, it was an election according to the according to the judgments mm. ought not to have been these candidates ought not uh, you know, shouldn't have even contested the elections. Mm. Uh, I'm, I'm getting let's assume, I'm, let's I'm assume getting you are confused receiving, here. Let's but, assume uh, you as a candidate mm -hmm. you are receiving uh, monies, uh, let's say, or paid from the consolidated revenue fund. Um, and you you failed mm -hmm. to resign. I mean, as per the law, you would understand. Uh, Twelve months mm -hmm. prior to presenting yourself as a candidate, mm -hmm. and that by that failure alone, you are not qualified to contest the elections. By that failure alone, you are not qualified. So they look for the next. Um, no, after after after. after was that not what the judgment? No, uh, procedurally after nomination because NEC conduct the nomination process. After nomination of any candidate, uh, list is, uh, is, 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 is posted for any objections. Mm -hmm. So I did not hear about objections, mm -hmm. but I heard about petitions after the elections. So you see, if, you, if these people uh, were objected after the nominations, mm -hmm. it was the responsibility of NEC to have refused them. To, to, to Does that uh, house the to, intervention of the courts? No, you always go to court to petition the election results. No, so you know, but the, but, but the party are coming is like uh, these people ought not to have uh, contested in the first place. That is not correct. I mean, we're looking at the judgment. We're looking at the judgment. No, the judgment came after the petitions, after the elections. But the process, the, the, pro the, the process, the, the process of did the court annul the election. No, I don't want to come to the courts to answer that question. Let us let us let us go step by step. When you contest for any election uh, as a parliamentarian or as a councillor, after uh, neck or a, a, a nomination, your name is posted for, for objections. If you are not objected, that is the basis under which NEC permitted you as a, uh, your name as a candidate for the for the election. How does that stop me from no, challenging no, no, your election? No, no, no. If you give me a minute, okay, that that's the first step. Then you come now to to the election. After you contest the election, how come a judge will tell you no? He ought not to have contested in the first place. So that is a case for NEC to answer. You, you seem not to have gotten the point. Um, uh, I so do. I so the do. Courts, the courts look at the facts. What are the facts? One, mm -hmm. at the time you presented yourself as a candidate. Mm -hmm. You present yourself to neck. That's what I'm saying. At the time you presented yourself as a candidate, mm -hmm. who determines whether or not you were qualified as a matter of fact? Neck. It's neck. No, neck, not the court. It's neck. If that is taken to court, I mean, let's assume <laughs> neck uh, on a rule. Get this guy. Neck even announces results, election results. Okay? And that is challenged. The results are challenged in court, are they not? I know. You know, you see, you you have. Uh, uh, so, notwithstanding the by dating that, no. the courts can also come in. I know. That is the reason why uh, the, the, the petitioner graduated. To, to the courts to say that this man has contested, but I've just been told, or I've just, I've just, just have uh, records of him taking uh, salary, and you know, against the dictate of the constitution. So you, you you can do that, but at the initial stage, when you are going for nomination, it is neck that determines your qualification by posting your name for any uh, objection. We call it your objection. When you go for election, we call it a petition, mm -hmm. you know, to give you the difference between what trans uh, transpired in, uh, in NEC and what uh, transpired now. Is it your position that the court got it wrong um, in so far as 
uh, what you perceive, I mean, in terms of whether or not the elections are annulled? I mean, that was a simple question. No, I don't want to sit here to see no, uh, neck, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the court got it wrong. You ask me a question about who determines, you know, the, 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 the qualification. No, no, the question was, were the elections annulled? But I made the point that for a specific constituency, I think 110, a rerun was ordered. If and it, that for, if, the, for the other... MPs, if a petition is filed, and the court look at the merit and the demerit of a petitioner, and see that that election, uh, the, this particular candidate is not uh, qualified, or the elections were not uh, held in a way uh, in consonant with uh, what is provided in the law, they can annul those elections. You see, but when you want to bring NEC, the responsibility of NEC before the elections, that's where I have problem of understanding this annulity that you are talking about. Well, let, let's bring the minister because the, point, the, the, the the issue here was not so much as to where the rightness or wrongness of it. So it was, the, it was about what was ordered by the court, whether the elections were annulled. I mean, which are not the case uh, by the courts, uh, uh, definitely in the instance of the ten MPs, whether the elections were annulled. They were never annulled. I mean, the 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 second the case was not in court was, during nomination. Was, was the issue? But then I was the progress. The I mean, in so far as but not so much about the issue of the ten MPs. Yeah, because that's clearly what's on the bridge. Yes, it's clearly we, we're there. looking at we're looking at the report and probably the language. Imagine, I mean, a, a report coming out to say significant decrease in confidence, especially in these bodies that will be conducting the the next elections and the like. Um, anybody can run away with that uh, as yeah. a matter of fact. Is that that's, that's, for that's, that's, that's pretty, pretty, pretty unfortunate, which is why we want to sit with our partners and the European Union um, to discuss these issues. You know, jaw, jaw, jaw is better than war, war, war. Yeah. So, you know, opportunist adventurists might latch on to that uh, and cause all kinds of troubles, potentially. They might use that as a cannon folder to even dispute election outcomes, which is why there is utmost need for caution and not to embolden um, rogue politicians, if you like, or adventurous politicians or what have you. But again, you know, there's a silver lining here. His Excellency in his CNN interview yeah. has said he looks forward to further engagements with the European Union. We we'll look forward to that. I mean, this relationship cannot be defined by this one incident. Mm -hmm. We have come a very long way. Um, we have been mutually reinforcing partners, right? But we just think um, this warrants further discussions. We want them to throw more light on it, where they have avail available data to share with us, because that will make our work easy uh, to rekindle trust and confidence in those institutions. This is all we have. So nobody should misuse, misunderstand this as an attack on the EU report. We're asking for more insights, additional facts. Right. How do you respond to suggestions as to how we run our affairs? Because I, I think in some points of the report, they were even suggesting the winner should not take all. I mean, appearing to suggest more or less a parliamentary system of government as opposed to what we well, well, this is this is something we also think. You know, post-war, we had the district block system. Um, that did not, uh, you know, that was very conducive for a country just emerging from the throes of a very debilitating civil war. Right, you are talking about um, a situation where every political party has fair chance to be in parliament to be represented, you know, based on the amount of votes pooled. Right, so that is very good for national cohesion, it's good for reconciliation, it's good for all of that. As governments, we are not exactly opposed to that. Right, that is something that could be further discussed, right, because. At the heart of all of this um, is the indivisibility of selling, national cohesion, uh, peace, unity, and stability, uh, the cross-cutting issues. They are the fair hallmarks of our nationhood. And I think that was what kept us together in the immediate post-war years. Remember, 
we started with the national block system. Yeah. Then we came to the district block system, mm -hmm. you know, because you could not go back there to every nook and cranny of the country, and you did not want the country for that divide just coming from. What is your response to uh, the portion of the report suggesting that the um, the, the midterm census is unprecedented? Well, so um, even the repeal of the criminal libel law is unprecedented. Even the abolition of the death penalty is unprecedented. So there are many unprecedented things that this government but has suggested. Well, we are a reform-minded government. President Bill is a progressive leader, right? The midterm census should not be seen in the context of elections, right? We are talking about development planning. We are talking about programming. We are talking about resource allocation. So you really don't need, you don't need uh, the midterm census for you. You probably can only use ten percent of its whole value for elections. The rest of it you need for development, for resource allocation, and for development planning. Right. Now, if you want to do something for non goa children, for example, where you come from, right? Mm -hmm. You do not have absolute figures of inhabitants of all of those in that place. You need a midterm census to determine that, right? NGOs might want to the population of a community before they go there. What we have are absolute figures. Uh, what my teacher has taught me back in school, even though I was very poor at mathematics, was show walking. Show walking. Yes, this is our population, but how did we get from there to here? We do not have the building blocks, the foundational blocks. This is all we're asking for, and I'm, I'm very heartened by the fact that the EU realized that this is very constitutional. It's within the mandate of His Excellency to declare midterm census and to go through the necessary procedures which have been so tidily done. Right, so we are family on course, and we think it's the right and proper thing to do. You know, there's a pilot program going on already. So, some people say, you know, let's leave that for us. The program is bottom line, and it's coming to you from our way here, broadcasting house. In Britain, my guests tonight are the Minister of Information and Communication, Mohammed Rahman Swari, and the Honorable Ibrahim Bundu, who has been a head of a delegation, the ACP EU Joint Observer Mission. For quite some time, he became vice president and later president of the body there, my guest tonight, trying to look at the the recent EU report and probably how, as a government, um, they, they can respond to, to the report, if only to maintain the cordial or very good relationship between the government of Sierra Leone and the EU. Let's see what the messages are saying here. Mr. Mr. Minister, where are your men in the strategic units? They need to engage the media. And this is from Martin A. M. Slav. The EU should tell us who they spoke to so that you guys will go after them. The EU is very professional. I will not agree with you on that. The EU report is a wake-up call for the current government to do more. It speaks to the numerous challenges facing us. Former president expelled an EU resident representative during his time. Why was that? Not important. This is from Momo Fawai. We acknowledge what EU is contributing to our socio-economic development. But the EU press statement was skewed. At least I it should have mentioned the progress the government has made for in addressing the issues. This is from B. W. Bokari. More text messages coming in. We encourage you to send them to the number you see on the screen. Zero three zero zero two two six three nine. We're now go for a short break, we'll be back and then we progress with the program. My name is Joseph Ebin Dakapuan. Get into the groove this week and every other week and be part of the bottom line. The civil marriage starts at 10 and ends at 3 o'clock. If it's done before that, it's not legal. Bottom line, the all-new SBC Radio and Television Public Enlightenment Campaign Talk Show is especially designed to delve into issues and graciously offer you an amazing, appetizing, and satisfying cocktail of in-depth views, comments, analysis, and prognosis by well-grounded experts with wide-ranging knowledge and experience. When we see a country that is doing the right things, we want to reward them and to help them succeed even more. Get cracking and tune in to Bottom Line on the SLBC for 60 minutes of incisive and pragmatic good governance interviews, accountability interviews, and personality interviews for the whole story behind the story. What more can you possibly hope for? Bottom Line, you can't afford to miss it. Welcome back. 
Welcome back to the program Bottom Line. Like I said, my guest tonight are the Honorable Ibrahim Bondo and the Minister of Information and Communications. Now, let's look at uh, the way forward. I mean, um, the report is out. Um, you have said you are going to engage the, the, um, the EU and probably sample more information in respect of this. Um, Honorable Ibrahim Bundu, how do we move away from this? How do we address this as a country? As a country, like I said, uh, let us tread cautiously. I know the political tension around the discussion. Nobody will be comforted by some of those observations made by the EU. If I were in government, I might even I might act even more than what uh, what is going on now. But that will not help. I'm here talking about preserving the relationship vis-a-vis -vis the development benefits that we are having. We are a donor-driven uh, uh, nation. And as a donor-driven nation, I mean, you definitely tread cautiously when you have anything, especially when some of the... Some of Even the, in the face of scuffing... No, no, no. In, 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 I'm, 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 I'm saying so continuously because I've had some someone for some statements you know, I mean, forget about what you have had on for a moment and look at the the issues raised the descriptions you know i mean you, you, you are you, you know are, to say you are head of government I business know, to say and we are talking about how you respond or you respond to these um, um sorts of issues. if you make a statement uh Kapua, and somebody said that statement you made is unfortunate it's with volume especially coming from high-profile people. That's my boy here, you know. So bringing out some of those, because the, e, uh, the EU, uh, I mean, I'm a witness to I implementing some of those, uh, those their, their, their programs. We've always been, most, most of the time we have been complaining, even in par parliament level, not only Sierra Leone, ACP countries about the, the encumbrances in terms of uh, how they are, their project is. They are very, very sticky. I mean, but that is their taxpayer's money. You know, he who pays the pipe are called the tune. But that is well, not any sound. No, yes. Any tune. Uh, uh, well, not any tune. What I'm saying is, I mean... Was it a failure of diplomacy that they, were, that they also failed to engage the government on this? I mean, if only to avoid... I, 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 I'm actually, they are saying they were not engaged, but... Uh, do you know they are saying were not engaged? Well, no, we're not saying that. I mean, the report. The report. The report. The report. No, the report. So, you you see, you see, I mean, the government is too, I mean, in your words, and very wise counsel, the government is to, you know, cautiously in responding on the basis that he who pays the paper, in your words, calls the tune. I was also saying that on the fact of what has been published, on the basis of what has been published in the language of the mission itself, was it a failure of diplomacy that did not engage um, government? They are very partners in so far as this. Challenges are if I'm on, if I'm if I'm on the if I'm on the on the side of the the, the government, like I said, I will engage the the, the 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 ambassador in Brussels. I will engage the minister of development and the the NAO. If you will, you know, techni technically, the, these people will, will advise you. You know, because we all have our ways of. Uh, that if you were on the side of government, if you were on the side of the EU, how would you have come out with such a report? Mm -hmm. if, I, if I were on the side of the EU, yes. Well, the EU has its own way of monitoring. I mean, they they are they are monitoring they are their own if you were mind, you, mind you, the EU is 100% guard, not alone. So the, their, their method of monitoring how those grants are used in any country, I can tell you without hesitation, I mean, you have to understand it and you have to put up with it if you want to, if you want to use that grant. This is where I'm coming from. The okay, so, so, so uh, we probably have lived too fast. We are not talking about using grants right now. We are talking about responding to a report that has been published. So, uh, my dear brother, uh, this government remains committed to implementing 
the recommendations of the European Union and other uh, observer groups. Already at a major stakeholders meeting sometime in 2019, some of the, the observations have been flatly rejected. For example, um, they are saying instead of uh, placing um, candidates on the ballot on the basis of their sodings or on the basis of their political parties, they are now requesting that we begin to ballot so that people determine their places on, on the ballot papers. We have rejected that as government and as stakeholders, right? A host of other other ones. But the important point is that this government in three and a half years have been able to implement more recommendations than any government prior to this period. And President Bill has a lot of appetite to do that. Um, for others that have been implemented, with the review of the Public Elections Act and draft instructions given to the Attorney General. Uh, with the review of um, the PPRC Act and drafting instructions given to the AG. This is work in progress and we are confident that on the enactment of those by the Senate Parliament, about 80-90% of the recommendations would have been addressed. Mr. Minister, you seem to be responding as though this was an assessment of the three-year uh, governance of, of um, mm -hmm. President Bill. I mean, we are talking about uh, 2018, um, mm -hmm. you know, the outcome of 2018 elections are recommendations that probably you are even in opposition. Then. Well, no, no it's, it's not probably. We were. The fact of the matter is, this has become like the original scene. We have to pay for it. We have to, we have to deal with it. Right? I mentioned, remember, I have an issue. Now, look, these uh, 29 recommendations predate President Bill's ascension to power. Right? We inherited it, like, much the same way, like the Christians say, Said there about the original sin, uh, but we have to deal with it, right? And we have demonstrated a lot of appetite, a lot of tenacity. We have demonstrated a lot of will and commitment to be able to resolve it, uh, and that appetite will not win. Uh, we'll continue to engage with all silly stakeholders in the matrix to ensure that uh, by the time of the next elections, right, all of the hurdles, all of the bottlenecks all of the recurrent decimals that have continued to plague the electoral process will have been addressed and the bottlenecks removed. Are your teeth set on edge because your grandparents have eaten some pips? Uh, no. No. You know, you know me. You know this government I represent. Um, we are setting our eyes clearly on the key objectives. Delivering governance, delivering a better uh, administration, good governance, and strengthening democratic institutions to deliver um, a free, fair, and credible elections to all Sierra Leoneans. Your part in short, the Honorable Ibrahim Bundu. Well, like I said, um, an issue uh, is still, I'm still looking at, uh, I know the, the benefits of, uh, of our relationship with the EU uh, when I was in government, and there's still when I'm not in government, um, there's a data speaking to that. So if I see you no know, confrontations... Why have we seen this confrontation? Well, without I mean, at the risk yeah, of history... I mean, I mean, I mean words. I mean words. From where? Words. Which quarters? Can we have his parting shots? Yes. I just want further enrichment. Well, this further enrichment. Yes. I don't know where. You know, I, I, know I, 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 I ask you very subtly that, uh, you know, if you say something or you do something, I said what you have done is unfortunate. That's... Uh, it's a bit confrontational. Yeah, no, no, the person has just something that, in his mind. It's not, I know, I mean... You can, uh, to say uh, something is unfortunate, it's confrontational, honorable? Well, I mean, uh, it's a, this, this is... This is a, uh, anyway, let me, let, let me say my bit, like you say, my party shot, I'll still continue. I'm, I'm retired, though not tired. You know, I want to continue. I continue to see. Of course. Why do you yeah. think I'm asking for that? Oh, really? But well, well, that, well, that, well, that is not. Uh, that is not. Uh, you know. The, I know. Tomorrow we we we, we come back. Uh, these are the the, 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 the strong partners we'll be looking forward to. Well, I do you mind you as a government or as a country. If I'm getting a report published, it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. I don't get that the way you, you have said. I mean, the way you sound that to even say or to even suggest, you know, um, to them in a way 
that I mean the report or the comments or whatever I mean are unfortunate might probably affect our chances as a country because we depend on them largely I mean they have their own ways of doing things I mean coming out as with a position to say I mean we we disagree with XYZ like the minister said uh, aspects of your recommendations I mean would that deprive um, no it know? is for it is it is for EU it is for EU to respond because I'm sure they are listening their partners are... Uh, Why do you think it would be unfortunate um, to merely say, I mean, we disagree with the report or we disagree with... No, it's, it's not me saying that. It's not me saying that. The government should the, say it. Yes, the government to say this is unfortunate. The judiciary came in, you know. I, I would have loved uh, a politically... Uh, political words chosen for, because, of the, because of the respect I have for the for the relationship between the EU and Sierra Leone. Okay. You know, that's why I am refusing to, to even go into what government did before, what this government is now doing, you know, because I'm not here for that. I mean, we have the outfits that we, if, if he were here, he would respond accordingly. But for the purpose of what motivated me to be here, I am still asking that uh, we said cautiously, and I've, 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 I've highlighted the various areas that will benefit this discussion, because these people, you know, they have a lot of information about how the, how the EU works in terms of uh, observation. You know, this is just one of the observations you call an election. They have indicted institutions, very serious institutions that. Uh, the, the, that are, that are really essential in this country. The PPRC, if there is a breakdown in confidence on, on the PPRC, the, 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 electo, the, the election uh, uh, management board, the police, it's very serious. These are, uh, I'm and you don't want those institutions to come out and make their positions clear? Of course, definitely. Um, why I am I'm saying it now, uh, we don't, it, it should not be the ordinary discussions where you send in, uh, you know, let the, 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 the head of the police, in consultation also with the, pres the vice president who happens to be the chairman of the police council and their EMB, that executive yeah. management board, to actually take a deep breath, look at this report and, uh, you know... Come out with the position. Come out with the position. All right. You know, that, that's noted. That's yeah. noted. That's noted. All your, um, Minister, your part sure. Okay, so, uh, like I've always said, um, we are on the fast track to implement some of the key recommendations. Yes, um, we know the police has come in for quite some bashing, but I mean, this is a historical problem. We have the police force. Like uh, we did. You also inherited it for Okay, so you are comparing 11 <laughs> years. You are comparing a, a, a So this inheritance will always go. I will check about tomorrow. We'll go to <laughs> inherit your police. No, no, no. So <laughs> we are saying if we have all the time in the world, we have started an engineering process to capacitate the police. Um, the police is not agile. It's not very mobile. cannot be robust in the current constrained environment. We took over a police force that had to use mobile phones to communicate amongst themselves, right? In far from locations where there are dark spots, they are incapacitated. The mobility itself was quite a constraint. So as I speak to you, uh, you will have a technical team in Germany to inspect some trucks for procurement for the police to make them nimble, to make them agile, to make for more uh, time response to calls and to policing duties as well in difficult terrains like we had recently in Koenadu. Apart from that, we just put out expression of interest for the procurement of communication sets for the police. So all of this will, will enhance the capacity of the police to be able to police more effectively elections wherever they may be held. So this is not putting arms akimbo or throwing up hands in the air. We are making real efforts. Let's leave it here, uh, let's leave it here Mr. Minister. The program, having bottom line coming your way, from uh, broadcasting house here in Freetown. My guests have been the Honorable Minister of Information and Communication and Honorable Ibrahim Bundu, former leader of government business and, you know, um, major party in parliament, the All People's Congress. But more importantly, he was also head of delegation 
for the ACP AO mission, we are he led that uh, outfit as vice president and later president of that. We hope you have enjoyed this program, which came to you from our side here. Many thanks to all of you, those who join us on radio, those who join us on television, and also our other platforms. Hopefully, we'll be back with a repeat broadcast of the show. Until then, thanks to my producers, Patrick Salia and Tilly Kuma, members of the technical crew. Until we meet next week, they are broadcasting house. Joseph Ibuinda Kapoor is the name wishing all a pleasant evening. Bye-bye.